Welcome to Sentinel Skills, where knowledge is power. We appreciate your support, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more informative videos. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of risk assessment. Now, what exactly is risk assessment? It's a critical process used in all sectors to identify and evaluate potential threats or hazards. Why is it so important? Because it's the cornerstone of decision-making. It helps businesses, organizations, and even individuals to understand the risks they face and to make informed decisions on how to manage those risks effectively. There are two main types of risk assessment, qualitative and quantitative. The qualitative approach focuses on the nature of the risk, while the quantitative approach quantifies the risk to provide measurable and numerical data. Each approach has its own unique benefits and limitations. Now that we understand what risk assessment is, we can delve deeper into the two main types, qualitative and quantitative. First up, we explore qualitative risk assessment. Now, let's imagine risk assessment as a puzzle. The qualitative approach is like the first step, getting a broad picture of what the puzzle looks like. It involves evaluating and interpreting risks based on observation, expert judgment and experience rather than hard numerical data. It's about the what and the how rather than the how much. What makes qualitative risk assessment unique? Well, it's subjective and relies on human judgment. It's the detective work of risk assessment, digging into the causes, consequences and context of potential risks. This approach gives us a narrative, a story of the risk, which can be especially valuable in complex situations where numbers alone might not tell the whole tale. But just like every good detective story, there are twists and turns. The subjective nature of qualitative risk assessment can be both a strength and a limitation. While it allows for flexibility and creativity, it can also introduce bias and inconsistency. The story of risk we get is only as good as the experience and judgment of the people telling it. So, how do we go about telling this story? There are several common methods used in qualitative risk assessment. For instance, there's the Delphi method, which brings together a panel of experts to discuss and reach a consensus on risks. Or there's the SWOT analysis, examining the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of a given situation. And let's not forget the good old-fashioned brainstorming, a simple but effective way to identify potential risks. Whether you're using these methods or others, the goal remains the same, to create a rich, detailed understanding of risks that can help guide decision-making. It's about painting a picture of the risk landscape, where the peaks and valleys are, and what might be lurking in the shadows. That sums up the basics of qualitative risk assessment. Let's shift gears to its counterpart, quantitative risk assessment. Quantitative risk assessment, unlike its qualitative counterpart, uses numerical values and data to measure and evaluate potential risks. It provides a more mathematical and objective analysis, often incorporating statistical models and probability distributions to determine the likelihood and impact of potential risks. Key characteristics of quantitative risk assessment include its precision, objectivity and repeatability. The precision comes from its use of numerical data, which provides clear, specific results. Objectivity stems from its reliance on hard data, which eliminates subjective bias. Repeatability refers to the ability to consistently reproduce the same results given the same data and conditions, which is a strength of quantitative methods. Like all things, quantitative risk assessment has its advantages and limitations. The advantages are quite clear. It provides a precise numerical basis for decision-making which can be particularly useful when dealing with large-scale or high-stake risks. It allows for a more accurate prediction of potential outcomes and the impact of mitigating actions. However, the limitations should not be overlooked. Quantitative risk assessment requires detailed data which may not always be available or accurate. It also involves complex mathematical models which may not be easily understood by all stakeholders. Moreover, it assumes that the future will behave like the past, which may not always be the case. There are various methods used in quantitative risk assessment. These include, but are not limited to, event tree analysis, which maps out potential outcomes based on different events. Fault tree analysis, which identifies potential causes of a specific undesired event. And Monte Carlo simulation, which uses random sampling to predict outcomes. Each method has its strengths and weaknesses, and the choice of method will depend on the specific situation and resources available. 
With a grasp on both qualitative and quantitative risk assessments, it's time to compare the two. Scene script, both qualitative and quantitative assessments have their place in risk management, but how do they differ? Well, think of qualitative risk assessment like an artist's sketch. It's subjective based on personal judgment, experience and intuition. It gives us a general idea of the risk landscape, but without precise measurements. It's about understanding the nature of the risk, its potential impact and how it fits into the bigger picture. On the other hand, quantitative risk assessment is like an architect's blueprint. It's objective, based on hard data and mathematical models. It provides specific figures, like the probability of a risk event and the potential financial loss. It's about measuring the risk, quantifying its impact, and calculating its potential cost. So when should we use each method? Qualitative risk assessment is useful when we need a quick, high-level view of the risks. It's like a compass guiding us in the right direction. It's best used in the early stages of a project when we're still defining the scope and identifying potential risks. Quantitative risk assessment, however, is like a GPS, giving us precise coordinates. It's best used when we need detailed information to make informed decisions such as allocating resources or setting risk mitigation strategies. Now let's look at some case studies. In a construction project, the project manager used qualitative risk assessment to identify potential risks, like weather delays or price fluctuations. This helped her prioritize the risks and develop initial mitigation strategies. Meanwhile, in a financial institution, the risk manager used quantitative risk assessment to calculate the potential loss from credit default risk. This helped him set the credit limit for each customer and allocate capital for potential losses. As you can see, both approaches have their strengths and weaknesses. Qualitative risk assessment provides a broad view of the risks, but lacks precision. Quantitative risk assessment provides precise measurements, but requires reliable data and complex models. Understanding the differences and when to use each method is key, but what about combining them? The concept of mixed methods in risk assessment is becoming increasingly popular. This is because combining qualitative and quantitative approaches leverages the strengths of both. Qualitative assessments provide depth and context, helping us understand not just what risks exist, but why they matter. Quantitative assessments, on the other hand, give us hard data, enabling precise measurements and comparisons of risk levels. But how exactly do we integrate these two approaches? Well, it's all about balance. In practice, a risk manager might start with a qualitative assessment to identify potential risks and gain a broad understanding. Then they could apply quantitative methods to those areas identified as high risk for a more detailed analysis. For instance, in a factory setting, a qualitative assessment might reveal safety concerns around a particular machine. A follow-up quantitative assessment could then measure the exact probability and impact of an accident occurring. As intriguing as the integration of these approaches is, it's not without its challenges. Risk assessment is not without its hurdles. Whether you're working with qualitative or quantitative methods, each approach has its own unique set of challenges. Qualitative risk assessment, for instance, requires a high degree of expertise and judgment. Its subjective nature can sometimes lead to inconsistencies or biases in the results. On the flip side, quantitative risk assessment, while more objective, can be complex and time-consuming. It requires substantial data, and the accuracy of the assessment is only as good as the data provided. So, how do we navigate these challenges? It's a balancing act. A combination of training, experience and sound judgment can mitigate the risks associated with qualitative assessment. Meanwhile, ensuring you have robust, reliable data and using advanced statistical tools can help address the challenges of quantitative assessments. Overcoming these challenges is crucial, especially as the field continues to evolve. The landscape of risk assessment is ever-changing. We're seeing emerging technologies like predictive analytics and artificial intelligence, which are enhancing our ability to forecast and mitigate risks. Additionally, methodologies are evolving, with best practices now leaning towards a more integrated approach, combining both qualitative and quantitative assessments. As we look to the future, we anticipate further advancements in this field, such as real-time risk monitoring and the increased use of machine learning. With these future trends in mind, let's conclude our exploration of risk assessment. We've covered a lot of ground today, from dissecting the essence of qualitative and quantitative risk assessment, their unique strengths, limitations, to their integration for a comprehensive view.
The key takeaway? There's no one-size-fits-all approach. The choice hinges on your specific context, resources and objectives. As the landscape of risk assessment evolves, so should our strategies embracing new technologies and methodologies. Thank you for joining us at Sentinel Skills. Remember to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, stay informed and stay safe.